I um, I actually I usually make my decision more more based on how you're thinking, Khalil. But I'm I'm making my decision very differently this year. Um, I plan to make the decision about who I vote for based on what I think is right for the country um, instead of myself. Not mm -hmm. not what's right for women. Not right what's right for young people. Not what's right for any of the boxes that I check because. I think for a long time, I, and I know personally, I have always voted based on my my issues. And I don't think my issues are the biggest issues right now. Um, I've seen that I was okay during Trump's presidency, and in reality, I'm okay during Biden. I'm, I'm not as impacted by a lot of the inflation, a lot of the things, um, and that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are a lot of people who are, so my commitment is that I'm going to make the decision based on what I think is is right for the people as more of a collective rather than my individual needs, because I don't think the issues as much as, I actually agree with you, as, as much as I, um, as the conversation about abortion is important to me, I agree it's not the most important conversation we need to have right now and sometimes that's really hard mm -hmm. because it feels like i'm not taking my family into account but really what i'm doing is trying to better the country i live in as a whole so um really the how to is um to look at data objective data not the media not definitely god no not social media um, not even what the candidates are saying in some sense. Like, I, I'm interested in how they're delivering and what the message is, but um, the reason we talked about fact-checking and so much, because I think it's important to look at objective data now more than ever, um, because I think there's so many agendas that are, that are clouding everything else. So I intend to look at the country where we are now, where we have been, um, and interpret what certain decisions and policies could do in the future. So that's how, and I'm and I'm with you. I want a choice, um, and I want to be able to make an informed decision based based on information. And it's, I like we joke around. It's it's pathetic. It's sad. Blah blah blah. But. Um, it is really disheartening to see this entire debate. Like I, Agreed. I felt so drained at the end of it. I'm looking at the economy, being able to provide for them. I just recently had a daughter, so being able to put her in the best situations for her growth and um, opportunities, um, and outside of that, whether it be uh, you know healthcare, whether it be uh, um, just safety in general, feeling safe in terms of our, our country and all these things that are going on. The candidate that's going to make those better decisions around that. So I'll say, you look at the hierarchy of needs, of it's probably whoever's going to be able to provide those the best. Help, help provide, not solely provide. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you kind of dog me about this all the time, is that I have this thing where I, I spend little time thinking about the individual and pretty much all of my time is about what's the collective mass amount of good and that includes me like I care less about what's good for me and okay are we gonna make the 300 million the most effective or, or in in the case of the United States I really think the 8 billion like everyone because I think we we have the ability to influence that and so how well are we gonna connect with foreign nations in a way that lifts the world right and in a way that creates the structure such that the United States is a desirable country to connect with not because we're a military might the military might should be like the world's police force in a sense, not the world's tyrannical force. And I, sometimes I worry that we're treated that way. From an economics perspective, it's about how, put simply, just cost of living. How far does the dollar go? And can you please stop spending money and deflating the value of the dollar or inflating the cost of goods? Either way, it's the same thing. Um, I would love to see somebody who stops talking about how many laws they're going to enact and how much of the bullshit laws they're going to clean up to make it easier to do business, to conduct business, to act, 
and somebody who knows kind of like the foundational structure of the country. Um, and I, I would love to see, generally speaking, uh, something I always look for is how much of a leader in the traditional sense of what a leader means is the person. Um, so th those are really the factors, I guess. For me, the one thing that like, I like, get away from the bullshit. Like all of the, there's so much popular trending nonsense, it seems like around politics all the time. We talked a lot about it today. Um, and focus on the well-being of the people at large. Because like, it, here's an example is, I don't think abortion shouldn't have got as much time as, as it did in this debate in particular, because there are so many other issues that are so much more glaring. Right now, and that's not to say that's not an important issue. I'm just saying other people are working on it, right? And right now, the president's got a lot of shit to work on. Um, and so I'd be thinking about it from those perspectives. I'd say one other kind of caveat. I think this is the first time I've ever felt like I don't have a choice. This is the first time I felt like, like um, in the past, I've, I've talked to you guys about I feel like I'm making a decision about the lesser of two evils. I actually don't think there's a decision right now, which is why Nadia's comment about something needs to happen so that we have a choice, a real choice. That way I can evaluate those criteria is important.